Deborah, with her 30 years of being an entrepreneur and creating over seven companies, knows exactly what it means to accept the mission. When you make that decision, when you accept the mission to become a solopreneur, to take yourself and your talents to market, then you embrace a life of not only unlimited possibilities, but also the unknown. It's an elixir of fear and bravery that only someone who's taken the leap really understands. On our show, Deb digs deep with her guests to highlight what you, the listener, wants to know. The stories, the whys, and the hows to navigate the journey to success. Get ready to hear from some of the most incredible mission takers from Generation Z to Boomers. So sit up, perk up, and get ready to be blown away. Now here is your host, Deborah Drummond. All right, you guys. You know it's coming. You know it's coming. Welcome to Mission Accepted. If you just landed here today, it is your lucky day. Because you're going to probably laugh. Knowing my guest, Blair, (laughs) maybe you're going to cry a little bit. But you're going to definitely be inspired. (laughs) Excuse my voice. We've been doing these incredible 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 summits and i've been talking to a lot of cool funky resilient women and you know what you guys know that you're the best podcast guests and hosts and listeners ever um i know that because you tell me (laughs) you call me and tell me i loved it it was sue sue called me a couple weeks ago and she goes i just want to tell you 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 have the best like podcast i'm like thank you she goes i listen to you every day while i'm doing my yoga and i'm like good to know good to know but anyways i love it but you know what you guys also are you are the most resilient podcast guests and hosts and listeners and that is absolutely the word that i'm going to use to describe blair today look at you don't take on the mission and stay on the mission with a little something like a little something you know like the tar hits the road at some point then you're like oh my gosh i gotta go listen to that podcast because there was a bunch of crazies just like me that were talking about the story so look at blair is so cool uh we're so happy to have her time today i mean she's got tv stuff going on she's been like new york times square her book's been up on the screen i mean she's doing she's going to be speaking at the show up stand up and speak up summit and she and if i remember correctly her title is going to be something like stop playing the slot machine no slot stop playing the social media stop uh, slot machine so that's going to be fun <laughs> if you haven't you know thought about it by now blair's pretty adventurous so darling thank you so much for coming on to the show and do share do 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 share um your story a little bit with us because resilience is the name of your game Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. This is so fun, especially because you and I go way back to where it all started, actually. Isn't that funny? We would, I mean, you guys, just so you know, you may not ever hear me talk about my aromatherapy company. I owned two home party companies for 17 years and started the first aromatherapy home party company 30 years ago when people were like, aroma, what? What did it smell like? And when me and Blair got introduced, Someone introduced me to her. She's like, you should talk to Blair about being in the book. And I'm like, I, I know her, but I know I was like, I know her from my recent experiences. And she reminded me how, how many years ago did you come to my house? Yeah. So I, I'll, I'll slide it into the story, Deb. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's like two parts. Well, there's many parts. There's 38 years worth of story here. A bit of a trigger, uh, sorry, a content warning. I talk about some heavy stuff, addiction, death, everything in between. Um, If you feel like it's hard, pause this, walk away, do what you need to do. If you need support, reach out to me and I'll help you find the support you need in the area you live. So I just want to put that out there. I'm not a professional therapist. I'm a professional human who's gone through hard stuff. I'm going to give you the high level because we don't have endless hours, but I'm the daughter of a man who lived with addiction and a child of divorce. Um, My father was in and out of my life, broke my heart. I didn't understand. I thought he stopped loving me. This is like the really high Coles notes version. Um, Literally high, no pun intended there. And then um, in my twenties, like, so I had a lot of anger and rage and, you know, depression, anxiety, didn't respect myself, low self-esteem. In my twenties, I was given the tools from Landmark Forum to give, to forgive my dad. I didn't know I was going to do that. Something just clicked and I decided to accept my dad for who he was. And we had a beautiful conversation and our new relationship started. And that was in my early 20s. And so um, we got to know each other. He came to visit me in BC, all the way from Winnipeg multiple times. He got to walk me down the aisle. But at the end of 2018, 
we learned he was terminally ill. Uh, he had COPD and, and lung cancer. And I felt like my world was just completely rocked. I started sharing our story of his addiction, my forgiveness, our resilience, and it was helping people. It was inspiring people to fix relationships, get therapy, seek sobriety or, you know, harm reduction. And so we decided that it would be great to gather stories of resilience from around the world and put them in a book and bookend it with my dad's story and my story so that when he's no longer here, we have a piece that's a legacy piece to help people still like, you know, for eternity. Um, and that four years ago started uh, March, 2019. Unfortunately, from starting that project until now, my life got really hard. I had to learn how to flex my resilience muscle. We all have one. And like my grandfather, who was like my father passed away on the way home from his funeral. My husband and I got in a car accident and I got a concussion a few months later, my husband almost died. He had a heart attack and quadruple bypass surgery. Um, a few months later was COVID. We struggled this whole time with fertility and was told I probably couldn't get pregnant naturally. Unfortunately, well, fortunately, I got pregnant naturally about a year after the heart attack. Unfortunately, we miscarried. It was very devastating. Three weeks after the miscarriage, my father-in-law suddenly died after a three-week battle with cancer. Three months later, my mother suddenly died after a three month bat a three week battle with cancer. And then not even a year later, in the same year as my mom passing, my dad passed. I had a choice. I could give up. Or I could push through and bounce forward and keep going. And that's what I've done. And over the four years while navigating all this and running my business, which is how I met Dev, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, I built a community called the Global Resilience Project, and it's a safe space for people to share stories of resilience. And we do it through a podcast called Radical Resilience and our books, The Global Resilience Project, social media, online, and I'm an international motivational speaker. And I've decided that my life's work is to turn my pain into purpose. We don't have children, and I went through all of this for, you know, not for a reason. These are just the cards I'm dealt, but I'm taking what I've learned to help empower people to share their stories. So that's the Global Resilience Project. And I think I was able to grow it the way I have is because my background's in public relations and social media. And how I met Deb, which is like the parallel, is um, I at 23, I left my job at Lululemon Athletica and started a PR company and simultaneously accidentally started a coupon company because I wanted free yoga. And I couldn't figure it out. And so I started a coupon book and it was called Living Free Vancouver. And then it evolved to be online. And then it was across Canada. And like, don't start a coupon company. Just pay for yoga. That's the lesson there. But <laughs> I was somehow connected. I think I met you at a BNI or I met you at an event or someone introduced me. And I showed up to your house on the bus <laughs> to talk to you about having coupons in my book. And maybe you did. I don't even know because there's know. A, it's been a lifetime. That was about 15 years ago. So um, I'm also the CEO and president of Blair Kaplan Communications. I specialize in social media strategization, strategy implementation, social media education, and helping you become a thought leader. So that's a high level of who I am. <laughs> that is the high level. But I mean, there's so much un to unpack there, but not because you're so good at communication that that you can follow that story and, and I absolutely see where you are today. Right. And so, um, okay. So clearly it's not about, are you resilient? You are resilient. And who would have known? Who would have known? So you, like when you say you talk about your pleasure or your, your pain turned into purpose. So before the book, before, you know, before all these things that came into play, um, what was your, like, did you, did you take care of yourself? Well, were you a self-care person? Were you always a self-care person? I mean, what I hear throughout there is you've created this incredible self-care community for mm -hmm. people since you've had to become resilient. But before that, was that, was that on your radar? Yeah. I've always been someone who like balanced a fine line of like loving to party, but also going to yoga, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like hiking and being in nature. So I've always been physically active in some capacity. But when I learned my father who lived with addiction was going to die, I under, like I just decided that I couldn't navigate his end of life with anything that was going to like increase my anxiety or depression. And alcohol was that. And alcohol was also a bridge to bad decisions. So I decided, okay, January 1st, I'll be sober. I didn't know for how long. I just 
that was the decision. And I woke up actually that day to an apology letter from my dad for being an addict and like screwing me up, like abandoning me. And it was a really beautiful letter and I haven't had a drink since. So that was a proactive approach, but also a couple things. One, I define resilience as the ability to bounce forward. And two, I realized we all have a resilience muscle. It's like this invisible muscle that runs like head to toe. And so we are all resilient and there's things you can do to make it stronger when, especially when you're not in a challenge so that when you're in a challenge, you can move through your challenge a bit faster or a bit easier. And so just doing things like there there's things I was doing proactively that I didn't realize was preparing me for this dark night of the soul. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a, yeah, it's a mix. So what do you suggest? I mean, there's, I mean, we have people that listen to the show because they want to be entrepreneurs. They want to understand what that looks like, how you navigate. There's people that just come and get inspired because, you know, honestly, is there a better show on inspiration and motivation? Like you can listen to it. No offense, Oprah. I love you. Like love them all. Love, you know, I listen to them in the morning. Thanks, Brene. Thanks that. Um, and they, they talk about it because they've had it. But I mean, the one thing that I love about entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, whatever you are, you know, an entrepreneur that can't say no, whatever you are, is there, is there seems to be a bucket of resilience and then somehow they find another one and somehow like you can push an, an entrepreneur pretty, because they're, they're so locked into their dream. Mm-hmm. How do you navigate that now? I mean, you've had a lot of, and you've had to be resilient, but look at what you just described was beyond resilience. Yeah. So, so what do you do for your personhood and what do you do for that what do you do for your company and what do you do for you well I had to learn to set boundaries um Mm. when my mom passed away I let a lot of things drop off and I was in survival mode I did what I needed to do and I was lucky because I had a bit of like financial support through my mom passing Mm -hmm. that allowed me to I couldn't fully go on bereavement I had to work and the clients I kept on understood My deliverables took a bit longer and I was very open. I don't hide my feelings. I'm very honest. And if someone wants to come into my world and there's something going on, I'll say like, I'm going to do a great job, but it might take me this length of time. And um, I can only work with people who understand that. And I only want to work with people who understand that. Um, But yeah, like uh, being an entrepreneur, you don't get bereavement. And what I really learned was that I didn't really set up systems and processes that allowed me to pass things off, especially because people hire me for my ideas. And that's not something I can farm out, but I can farm out the execute. I get well, not farm it out. That's a bad term, but I can hire to execute the vision. And so what that really taught me was I don't need to do it all alone. And I've started bringing on more, you know, team members like an OBM, an online business manager and a VA. And I have a graphic designer I'm leaning on a lot more for Think like I can make website updates or I can delegate that. And so I'm really like loosening the reins, but also I've been doing social media and PR for 15 years. I'm thinking about maybe I should retire and be a full-time motivational speaker. And so mm-hmm. I'm 38. And so I'm, I'm, I'm not retiring anytime soon. Don't worry clients out there. And if you want to work with me, I have capacity to empower <laughs> you, but Um, you know, I still have a whole lifetime ahead of me. So maybe in the next decade or like within the next decade, there's a big transition happening because I see myself standing on stages around the world, being flown around the world to empower people to strengthen their resilience muscle. Well, and I think that's the, that's the beauty and the opportunity and that's the beauty in this. So I was just talking, I had this conversation with this really cool chick, you'll meet her, she's speaking. And she's like, I'm a financial therapist. And I'm like, oh, that's a really interesting way to put it. And I go, tell me what you do. Because, you know, I'm vetting all these Incredibles. Um, the Incredibles was called the Incredibles for the summit. And she's like, and so she's starting to talk. And she goes, you know, what I really do is I'm that person that people lean on when they have their tower moment. And she's continuing to talk and that, that. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. So she finishes talking and I go, you do tarot. She goes, I'm like, you said tower moment. And if you know anything about the tower of the tarot, it's when everything comes crashing down. (laughs) Right. And so we just had that conversation and she's like, well, yeah, I really, what I work with people is when they have that financial experience, like you had a different experience, right? It wasn't financial crash, but she, you know, she says, when I work with people like that, um, I, you know, we dig through that spiritual awakening together. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what an interesting perspective. It was just a really nice way to take off these glasses and put on different glasses to go, 
And what is it? Because what you learned from your experience was your where some of the holes were or what you needed to patch or what, yeah. you know, what letting go is. And I think that's a big one for entrepreneurs, particularly solopreneurs, right? Mm -hmm. When you're used to wearing so many hats, mm -hmm. you don't necessarily see when you're in it, what, what could be going here, or what could be going there, because I think we're really locked into, we got this, I got this, like, yeah. especially when you're in survival mode, which a lot of people are in their world of entrepreneurship, because it's other financial survival. They don't see the duplication process. Mm -hmm. And what you just finished talking about how when you get to the other side, like where you are, that you can actually start to make plans three years, five years, five years, and take those inches forward. Mm. And, right? Yeah. And I think also what really like social media is my expertise. Like I'm known as a pioneer in it and people call me all sorts of things like Maven and guru and I, whatever, you can call me whatever you want. Just don't call me after 9 PM. Cause I'm in bed. And <laughs> what I really learned is because I always show up, especially Instagram, like I show up and I let people in, like I'm not posting a million times a day, but you know, I let people into what's going on, the good and the bad. And you know what, that actually helped my business grow because people saw that I'm a real human and what goes on behind the scenes. And mm -hmm. you know, people were then welcomed into my world. And it allowed that human to human connection because the problem with social media is entrepreneurs and businesses just show this polished image, but we want to know what's going on behind the scenes. Like, let me into your life. I want to see all the hard work you're putting in to that polished image. And when you do that, people respect you more and you build that like, know, and trust. And that was something that really like, really switched for me because I was doing it anyways, but I was really able to like, look at how my business was growing. And when my mom died, I had the most financially successful year in my business to date. Mm. And I was like, well, there's a correlation, like, cause I was doing less work charging my rates, but showing up, showing up fully. And that's the thing is like people, and if you don't show up, you don't show up, but showing up is half the battle in anything you do going to yoga, showing up and getting on your mat is half the work. Right. Doing the yoga is the other half. So where are you showing up for yourself? Where are you showing up for your clients? And social media is a place to show up. And every time you show up, you're planting a seed. Whether you tell a story, you like something, you engage, you follow. Do you want a flower pot or do you want a field? Right. Very good point. And I think that we're seeing a lot more people becoming transparent. We're seeing a lot of people becoming more authentic. Um, it's It's interesting. It's that um, having to do it all to having to let people in. And that was clearly one of the things that you learned. So when you talk about doing motivational speaking, right? So cool. That is so cool. Um, I mean, it's just such an extension. And I think that's what happens. I mean, I'm listening, listening to you talk and that's what happens after you do what you do. Like all of a sudden doors open that you didn't know. It's funny. Like you can't, forecast some of this stuff, right? You can't forecast. You start a social media company, you get into branding, you get into doing a book. Next thing you know, people want to hear what you have to say. And sometimes you get these ideas or other um, other things step into your world, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So what is that like for you? Because you know there's 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 two thoughts to it. Some people are like, you know, just stay on your path, do one thing. And, or if you go over here, this is going to suffer. Like, what do you think? I don't know. I mean, like I'm kind of a risk taker, <laughs> you know, I learned that life is short. Three parents died in their sixties. I've always just done what I wanted and figured out how to make it happen. Whether that means making $5 stretch two weeks or like <laughs> taking on too much work. Like I've always just followed my intuition and my gut mm -hmm. And it's led me down some really interesting paths that were not linear, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, can you reframe, reframe the question? Yeah, I, I I'll reframe make sure it. I... It's like, yeah, no, 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 no. Because there's, when you've built something mm. and it's working and you're grooving yep. and at one point, this is what you wanted mm -hmm. and you're in it mm -hmm. and you're oh, getting yeah. phone calls. And you're on stages yep. and you're on TV and your book's there. Yep. And all of a sudden, oh, maybe. 
So maybe I'm going to go off in this direction. Maybe I'm going to add this new division. Mm -hmm. Maybe okay. I'm going to open up a new country. And you're like, yeah. Yeah. So I think like having a plan and a dream and everything is great, but you also have to be okay with like the plan to change. Like I did not think I was going to be a 37 year old, sober, childless, parentless bird watcher living in Kamloops. But here I am. And so like, also like growing up, I loved when I got chosen to speak at assemblies at school. I loved writing. And when I was picked to be published in the yearbook, in my diaries, I would write, well, I would be published one day, who knows? But I forgot about all those dreams. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, life happened. And then I was like, I'm going to be a psychologist. And I was like, started that path. And I was like, I'm too messed up for that. And I went into PR. I'm like, this is perfect. And then, you know, now I, I, I'm a public speaker and I do PR and I've written books. And I think like, if you have a plan, you can follow it. But how many people do you know that spent tons of money, like hundreds of thousands of dollars on university because their mom told them to go to school to be a lawyer. And they spent X amount of years going to be a lawyer. Then they go and then now they're working 80 hours a week. They're miserable. And they're in so much debt and they, they quit and become a dog walker. Like plans can change. And, you know, uh, when I was young, my stamina was a lot different. So I can't do it all. I know that. And I like free time. Like I like reading. I like lying in the grass and looking at the clouds. I like traveling. I like my friends and family. <laughs> I don't want to work all the time. But when I was in my 20s, I did. I worked. I hustled. And look where I got me. And like, that's fine. That's great. I love where I am. But I think, you know, depending, I don't know how the nature of social media is going to be when it's time to retire. Maybe it's, I stay on and I, I bring on a team. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe all of a sudden, like Oprah or Drew Barrymore hear of me and pick me up and my, my speaking career, you know, goes to the moon tomorrow. I just need to be prepared to be unprepared. Like I'm unprepared. I'm prepared to be unprepared. Like, I don't know what's going to happen. I have a business manager who's helping book me. I hustle and, you know, where do I want to speak? Who do I need to speak to? You know, some opportunities are great. I just had a meeting today and it's going to put me in front of 150 people. I just, you know, recorded a segment on an Amazon Prime TV show. I just spoke in Winnipeg in front of 1,500 kids and 80,000 are going to watch the stream, the recording. I want to help people. So I'm going to say yes to opportunities that get me in front of people that are going to help me empower 88 million people plus and more. So <laughs> no, I mean, it's very, you know, it's very Branson, right? When someone asks you to do something, just say yes and figure it out later. That's like, my whole life. That's like literally my whole life. <laughs> and that is the life yeah. of an entrepreneur. That is the yeah. life of someone who takes on the mission. I always talk about how the mission changes. It changes form and, mm -hmm. and that it can be scary. Like, you know, as an entrepreneur, I've been one for a while. We've obviously been doing this We've been, we've done a couple of rounds, you know, mm -hmm. we've done a couple of rounds um, and it does change and uh, it's interesting where it can go. I was talking to a woman the other day. She's like, um, there's that side that, you know, go for it, Branson, figure it out later, what have you. And she goes, it's really interesting. She goes, for me, I'm at a place in my world where she goes, every time a door opens, I ask myself now, there's many doors do I walk through this one? And I was mm -hmm. like, Oh, that's good, girl. That's good. Because people like yourself, people like myself, people have been around for a while. There's many doors that open. She's like, yeah, I just go, Hmm, do I walk through this one? Mm -hmm. And I, when I said to her, as I said, the cool thing about walking through that one, this one, all of them is you mm -hmm. find out really quickly once you're seasoned, whether it was a good door to walk through or not. Yeah. Or if it was like, instead of a front door, it's a back, it's like yeah, it's a back the door. basement door or a back door. <laughs> no. And like, you have to learn a lot of stuff the hard way. Like I learned a lot of shit the hard way. So you don't have to. And like, mm -hmm. that's how you kind of learn sometimes by going through those not so awesome doors. Yeah. Um, there is no roadmap. There is no blueprint. And if you want to be an innovative entrepreneur and a thought leader, you need to do things differently. Thought leaders do things differently. So do you want to just make money and get by? Or do you want to be seen as an industry expert or a thought leader? You, then if that's the case, you got to do things a lot differently. Yeah, absolutely. So look, let's, let's, let's kind of answer a couple of questions from the crowd. That's not here, shall we? Okay. <laughs> I always, I hear them. I hear them in my head. You do a podcast, you know the deal. Okay. So people, 
look, there's all sorts, when people say social media, it always depends where people are at and they're starting to pick their platforms, which is great because everyone thought they had to be on 15, right? And be really good at 15. And people are starting to, as you say, ask other people to support them in their business so they have exposure. So if someone's in that social media world and they're not quite getting to where they want to go with it yet, or they have expectations, like I've been on, you know, Facebook or I've been on Instagram for three months or six months, like What's some of your industry, industry brilliance that you can share with people to actually help build themselves as a thought leader on social media? Mm -hmm. What can Um, people do? Yeah, a couple just pointers. One, tell, don't sell. Super simple. People don't want to be sold to. Tell stories. How did you get to where you're going? What did you want to be when you're younger? How are you solving problems? How are you helping people? Stories of your customers, stories of your colleagues, stories of your family, stories of when you scraped your knee when you were eight. Tell stories. That will build relationships. Yes, you can sell here and there, but people don't want to be sold to on social media. Okay. And then also come up with a plan that's easy for you to follow. If you know that three days a week is easy for you to post, then post three days a week. And maybe you come up with themes. Maybe it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, motivation Monday, moody Monday, like mummy Monday, depending on your industry, like wet your whistle Wednesday, like (laughs) wine Wednesdays. I'm sober. So like, um, I don't know, win Wednesdays, like a win, you know, Friday, fun fact Friday, behind the scene, flashback Friday. It doesn't have to be like an alliteration or anything, but come up with a, a, a theme. And then it makes it easier for you to do that. And if you can, batch your content. Yesterday, I spent an hour batching all my content for the Global Resilience Project. And I have a whole month's worth of content all scheduled. I'm scheduled until May 1st. Right. Right, right, right. And if you don't know what she means by that, you're just going to have to call her and ask. What do yeah, you you're going to have to have a discovery call with me. I, yeah, I think that that's important. I think that we forget about stories. And even every time I hear it, even when you just said it, I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. You know, like. I've been talking, thinking about this summit and I'm like, okay, I'm going to go. I'm having an issue with Facebook now. I can't seem to get my lives to go. But anyways, that's a d- different pro- problem. It was just today. I had issues too. It's fixed now. Oh, is it okay? Because it was like the other day. I was too. trying to go live and it, I, they must've been doing an update. So at one o'clock I did it and it worked. Okay. Well, let's hope that it works. Um, but I was thinking that too, like, you know, say, say who's on, say who's coming on as a speaker. But I think a, a nice little story, it is true. I, I, you hear it all the time. I do it. And then I think sometimes we fall out of that. We fall out of telling stories, but so good. Yeah. So good. So you have a resilience project. So people are like, so what is, what does that look like? There's a book, there's a podcast. Yeah. Like if- so this is the first book for those of you who can see, can people see me? They can see you. And there's, some that are listening, some okay. that are viewing. Okay. So this is the first book. It's a beautiful coffee table style book. And for those of you just listening, go to the global resilience project.com. It started off as a book, but since starting that, we also launched a podcast called radical resilience. Um, you know, I've, like I said, I've been speaking around the world about resilience and different capacities. Um, you know, I business life was strengthening your resilience muscle. Um, And we share stories on our website and social media. And we've just opened up and decided to do a second book. So our goal is to have 125 people, 125 stories of resilience in book number two. And, you know, we also actually launched a merch line. And the merch line's funny. (laughs) Like, it's cheeky and kind of has dark humor. I Um, saw it. I was like, ooh. Yeah. (laughs) So my, my sister is a therapist, Alana, and she's part of the project with me. She is our mental health director. And so the, the, the merch line is hers. Like she grew up loving graphic tees and we need to fund the project. It's a, you know, it's funded right now for my business and out of pocket, but we need to turn it into a business to make money. And so the merch line helps us. And so we have a shirt that says good grief, and a portion of that shirt gets donated to Camp Aaron, which is a camp for um, supporting kids who've lost loved ones. We have um, shirts that say Resilient AF, which I should be wearing one right now, but I'm not. It's not behind me because um, I'm in a romper. <laughs> and, you know, anyone could wear that because we're all resilient. We have mugs with our logo. Um, mm-hmm. We have, you know, mugs that say good morning, spelt morning. And then we have a very cheeky line and it's the Dead Parents Society. And it's a nice embroidered like emblem and it's the club that no one wants to join. And if you've never lost your parents, you probably think it's a little tacky, but guess what? 
people who've lost their parents get it. And I hope you never have to get it, but you will one day. Unfortunately, we're all going to lose our parents and it sucks. I yeah. just lost mine all very close together. And so I'm part of the club that no one wants to join. And we made shirts. <laughs> no, no, no. I saw that. I looked at it. I don't know. You sent me something and I was looking yeah. and I was like, oh, there's merch. And I was like, oh, wow. Very cool. Like morning is M-O-U-R-I-N-G. Yep. And I was good like, morning. wow. Yeah. Good morning. Right. Um, there's a gentleman I need to hook you up with. His name is Tony Lynch and he actually has a grief conference. You guys would be such a great bridge. Oh, I would love to meet him. Like I, yeah, like, listen, my sister told me, like, I never win things. I won something in grade five. Cause I'm nice. I won the mensch award. Like we, you know, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. but, um, I don't win. I'm always a bridesmaid, never a bride. I'm always the runner up, <laughs> but my sister told me you win the grief Olympics. So Oh, fantastic. Well, I'll hook you up. I'm going to be speaking at a summit. I'm going to be talking about what it's like to be an entrepreneur and have to work through, like have to get up and do your work as you're grieving, as you're hurting, yeah. as you're, because we know grief isn't a 30, 60, 90 day, right? And no, so I would love like? to meet him. I like yeah, yeah. grief is literally, that's been my life for four years and not just grieving people who've passed, but grieving the idea of being a mom, grieving the life that I no longer have, you know, just like there's other parts of grief that come along with losing someone, mm -hmm. you know, grieving parts of myself that don't exist anymore and grieving who I thought I was going to be. And I don't know, it's, it's interesting. It is interesting. Life, life is interesting. So look, um, I know we're getting to wrap up time. We've talked about a lot of really cool stuff, Blair. Thank you for being transparent. Um, if you had to give some advice out there about wanting to run a business, because I'm sure after people listen to us half the time, they're like, no, thanks. <laughs> they're like, Whoa, that's crazy on crazy, right? Because you're yeah. like myself. Like I said, we're entrepreneurs, which is an entrepreneur that can't say no or doesn't want to say no. Doesn't want to. Gets to not say no. How about yeah. that? We get to we choose to say yes. We choose to say yes. But, um, you know, what would you say? What would you say to someone that's just kind of looking to embark in this in this interesting decision, mm -hmm. in the interesting decision world? Yeah, get a mentor, find a mentor. You'll save yourself a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of headache, a lot of stress, a lot of tears. Find a coach, find a mentor. Don't do it alone. Yeah, straight up. That's really good. Okay, we are going to switch a little bit. You've shared a lot of things about you. Is there something cute, something we don't know about you? Something off the cuff? I mean, you're an off the cuff girl. I speak Hebrew. All right. Right? Oh, I not only do I speak Hebrew, but I'm going to tell you a fun fact. I used to have a little, I used to love roller skating. Oh, okay. But until I broke my arm. Oh, I haven't been roller skating since when I was oh. eight. Or nine. <laughs> you know what? There used to be. I loved roller skating, and and I and um, we're a little bit different in age, right? Yeah, <laughs> we're a little different in age. But uh, they used to have roller skating rinks. Yep, that's where and my parties we, were. Okay, so we used to roller skate and try to roller skate backwards to Linda Rodstadt. <laughs> so. I loved. I loved. Like my birthday parties were always at Saints Roller Rink in Winnipeg. And yeah, I loved it. And I'll, I'll never forget when my parents divorced, like my dad should have never like my like my mom was a saint for letting me stay at my dad's. All I ever wanted was to sleep at my dad's house. But like now I know why she shouldn't have let me. But so my dad, my first sleepover, my only sleepover, dad's like, what do you want to do? I'm like, I want to roller skate. So me, him and his like then girlfriend, we all went to this like midnight skate and like the first lap around, I broke my arm and like. I remember lying on the couch with my arm in a cast, looking at the ceiling, thinking like, this is the best day ever I got to be with my dad. Mm. And my mom said that was like, I was like, I think that was the last time I ever went roller skating and um, the last time I ever slept at my dad's. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the pleasure, the pleasure trauma stories. Okay. Look, right. I have one last question for you. Um, but before we do, we've talked about a lot of different things that you do and you share and you have gifts and talents. in. so where can people, I mean, it's all in the show notes. This is going to be the most, like amazing show notes, <laughs> fun show notes, hashtag everything show notes. But um, if someone's interested in learning more about your resilience project, if someone's going to be an author in your book, and I'm super grateful to say that I'm going to be in your book and I'm very yeah. happy about that. I'm, and I am actually talking about something in Blair's book. I have never publicly announced, never publicly announced. Right. So that's very, that this will be, this will be a breakthrough book moment for me. Yeah. 
I'm very honored. interesting. So, um, so you have a book, you have this merchandise that people can purchase and support. Mm -hmm. Um, you have services. Where can they find you, girl? Okay. Well, the global resilience project.com or Blair Kaplan.ca. Those are the two main websites. Yep. Um, you know, we're always growing and evolving the community. So if you're on social, we're global resilience community on Facebook okay. and Instagram and Blair from Blairland on Instagram. And you'll find me everywhere. I'm easy to find. I'm, a, I'm the only Blair Kaplan Venables. So. Nice. Nice. Okay. And it's in the show notes as well, you guys. So you know what to do. Um, look, before we, before we ask this last question, if you want to sit where Blair's sitting and you want to have a conversation and you want to share your story, you want to share about your business, how you got into it, why you stay in it, or how it leaped you into the next, you know, in, into your next place of fame. Let's just say your next place of fame, whether, whether you become famous or not, it's your next place of fame, right? Like one rolls into the other. You know how to reach me. It's debitdevdrummond.com. You guys know, for those of you that love and adore and follow us, you know the question that I'm going to ask. So we're going to like maybe throw a little bit. It's got to do, Blair, with this incredible project that myself and Corrine are going to be doing. We're walking across Ireland. We're doing eight marathons in eight days. Uh, we didn't sit down at the boardroom and figure that one out. That one came very divinely. And it's to help raise money for the music community because music, we believe, is such a powerful healer. And um, it's given so freely by artists. And you know what? 90% of artists cannot pay their rent. And there's just something not cool about that, that equation. So we're going to help and change that. So I need to ask you, if you're on your way to a desert island and it's you and you and you're one little suitcase and you've got enough room to slide in an album, what is the album you're going to pack and take with you that you could not imagine not listening to for the rest of your days? For sure, Red Hot Chili Peppers album and oh, maybe one of their best ofs, but is that even like, can I do a best of? You can do a best of. You can do. A I'm going to do of. a best of. Like they're my favorite band. I'm going to see them on Wednesday. So again. Oh wow! Very cool. I was going to say. I think they're touring right now. Yeah, I'll be in Vancouver. Okay, that's right. I saw. Okay, well, what you're going to be? Yeah. There. Okay. Okay. You need to do a little text. Maybe I'll go down and see Wednesday night. Wednesday night. I'm, I, I got two. floor seats. I just saw them in Seattle. Like I, they're my favorite. So yes, Red Hot Chili Peppers, best of. If not, it's a tie between blood sugar, sex, magic, and Californication. Okay. Okay. Well, you know what? I am literally a 15 minute walk from where you're going to be seeing them. I imagine you're going to be going to Rogers Arena. And um, maybe I'll check out and see if there's any tickets from Scalpers. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's actually at the stadium, uh, the, the football stadium. So it's, oh, I don't it's even think it's sold out. Yeah. It's there's a BC Place. Oh, BC Place. Okay. Yeah. BC Place. I was going to say Rogers or BC Place. Well, that's interesting. That's interesting. That's cool. Good. It's got a good acoustics in there. Okay. So um, red hot chili peppers it is. So you guys look, reach out to Blair. If anything that she said has grabbed your soul, you guys know what to do. We want you to send out this podcast to as many people as you think needs to hear what was said here today. Blair, we cannot wait to have you on stage. You are going to be on stage very soon. So if you guys look at just PM me, DM me, debadevdrummond.com. Go there, look up events, look up the stand up, speak up and show up. You're going to be see Blair is going to be speaking. I You're speaking August 8th. You're speaking August 8th, right? Well, April 8th, but also August 8th. Yeah, that's I was going to say, you're, you're coming up this <laughs> month in April, um, but you're also coming up um, August 8th. But yeah. th this, this may not be seen by April, but this one is definitely going to be seen by, because I know, because she wanted 08, like, Oh, yeah, wait, my oh, birthday, wait, right? Yeah, the yeah. Eighth of the eighth, right? Eighth of the eighth. So um, you're going to be seeing her all over the place. Anyways, uh, it was such a pleasure to have you. Hang on for a few minutes. We're going to say goodbye to our our lovely guests or our lovely listeners today. Why can't I talk? Lovely listeners. Um, and we've got an extra special question for you. So you guys, you know what? Thank you so much for what you do. Really, really, honestly, appreciate you. Appreciate the subscribe. And until we talk in a few days, you be well and stay groovy. So bye for now. 